Charlie Cushane here to make something I've always wanted for my big wood shop here. And that's a stool to sit on. And I sort of wanted to make my own. And today I'm going to do it. So stay tuned. I know there's a lot of stools you can buy out there, but I sort of wanted to make my own out of um, different kinds of things I found. And the first thing I found was an old type tractor seat, cast aluminum from the Florida Flywheelers. It's a show I go to every year. And I sort of wanted to make my stool out of this. And then I also found this old truck wheel, and I figured this would make a good base. And then I got these pieces of pipe with a bunch of fittings, steel pipe. So these are going to go in here and the stool will be on top of it. So it's going to take a little effort and it'll be a unique stool when I get it done. But let's get started. Okay, one of the first details I want to work on is after I make my bench and it's sitting on the floor, I do want to be able to roll it around. And the way I'm going to do that is put a couple of wheels back here that you'll just tip it back and it'll lift it up and I can wheel it around. So uh, I have some four inch wheels on order, but for now I'm making a piece of wood that'll fit right in here that will support the wheels. So I've been doing some calculations with different radiuses. So let's go cut those on the bandsaw. Okay, now I'm working on the inner piece to mount the post to. Okay, now it's time to glue up my center support that's going to hold the post, or help retain it a little, anyway. All right, now I got to turn this on my lathe, so the best way to find the center is just go across the corners. And that gives you a good approximation of the center. Okay, time to mount this on the lathe. That hole was to go onto this chuck I have. Okay, now you gotta stay safe. I got my face shield on and my dust mask. So I'm good for doing some of the finer turning.
Okay, let's see if it fits. Perfect. And the post will come straight up. And this is what lathe turning is like. Look at this mess. You need to think that's bad. Look at me. <laughs> that's why you gotta wear a dust shield and a mask. Okay, now it's time for my pal Chip to pull his weight and clean this mess up. Perfect. Okay, time to do some initial assembly. All right. Nicely held down. The next thing to do is put this behind here, and you see the metal plate stays behind the rim, so it's going to get captured like that and held in on the back side of the rim. So these bolts are going to go through here. And then through the rim, and then they're going to thread into these holes on this, and sandwich it all together. So let's get assembling that. I like to do the last tightening by hand, and I know it's. against there. Here you go. Perfectly lined up. Step one done. Okay, it's time to cut this pipe to length and thread one end. And I'm using some old tools that my father had. And this has a one inch thread. This is the pipe cutter. So I just put it on here. There we go. A perfect cut. Now we have to thread the end. Okay, this is the first time I'm ever using this tap that my father left for me. Um, and it's sort of a ratchet. Hear it? And if you want to go the other way, you just rotate this and the ratchet goes the opposite way. So that's kind of interesting, the way it works. So I want to thread this. And I think you need a lot of oil. Okay, as you might notice, it takes a lot of force to thread this. And, it w and my pipe was spinning in this vise, as you can see with these little rings. <laughs> so I need to find a way to hold this more secure. And I happened to find my father's old pipe vise. That must be 50 years old. And that will hold the pipe when I'm doing this. So now I have to get this mounted in here. So I'm going to make a new base for this vise. Okay, I got the vise in this vise. 
is just a simple, as you can see, I mounted it to a piece of four by six. And that way I can put any kind of vise, like my other vise I had in here. There. And then my pipe I want to thread goes in here. There we go. That's locked on there. Now let's test threading it and see if it holds tight. All right, put some oil on there. Oh yeah, that's much better. Gotta always go backwards and break the threads free. Alright. Okay. I think I threaded far enough. I'm just taking it off now. There we go. Perfect thread. Okay, next putting this together. I, I made a little spacer. It'll go on here with a washer and then this will thread on. But first I want to put a little glue on this. Okay. This. And this goes on. Tighten it on with pipe. There we go. Now that's pulling up from down below and pushing down from the top, so that should make it nice and solid. You may wonder why I have an elbow here, or a T. It's because out of here is going to be my footrest. Okay, here's the footrest. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Now I cut two more pieces of pipe and they'll have these end caps on. Okay, now it's time to put on the footrests. Uh, I have my um, support right here. And then this will go. This is a six inch piece I made, and a cap will go on here. And then this will, same thing on this side. And then we tighten them on there. I'm tightening the cap, because so it, it, it tightens both sides. Sweet. Okay, here's the last one I have to thread. As you see, I've gone to gloves. <laughs> there we go. Nicely threaded. 
Okay, this end will hold the seat. I'm putting this plate on. This is what the seat attaches to. Okay, and this Florida flywheeler seat is going to go right there. We're getting there, not much more to do. want these screws to spin so I'm pressing them in This will go on now, top of the post. Time to put the seat on. The bolt goes right through the middle. There we go. Perfect. All right, now to put some acorn nuts on the bottom of this, and they do two things. They're gonna dress it up and act as a check nut to keep that nice and tight. There, that keeps it nice, looking good, and no sharp edges. Okay, I just put some epoxy on this, down to the rim. Now I'll put some screws down to hold tight. And then the shaft for the wheels. It was right in there. Okay, time to mix some of my two-part gorilla epoxy. the epoxy in here. Okay, now we're putting the shaft in. And then this, put a little more epoxy in the top of the shaft. This will keep it from spinning and moving and lock it in there.
Okay, we're basically done building. Now we're getting ready for some painting. And I am steel wooling all the surfaces. Get rid of any loose rust. Okay, it's time to paint. And of course, you always paint the bottom first. And I'm using this bare premium black satin paint. So we'll start with the bottom. Here we go. Coat number one. Okay, time for coat number two. Okay, the stool's coming along nicely. A couple of details I wanted to work on. I'm gonna paint all this bottom wood a nice forest green, as you see. So, I'm getting ready to put the first coat on. You can see I taped along the, the top. Here we go, first coat. Okay, now the hard part. I want to paint Florida flywheelers in this green as well. I've never done anything fine like that. I bought an artist brush. Well, let's just see how tough it's going to be. Okay, this is how the stool came out. It has the wheels on the back, nice painted rim, decorative green support, the foot rests, and up at the top, the seat, which came out great. Okay, so here's the finished stool, and if you're wondering how the wheels work, I just tip it back like this, and I can wheel it anywhere I want in my shop. As you can see, it works fantastic. And then when I want to use it, put it down, hop up. It's a win-win. <laughs> 